This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. In 1964, two crewmen aboard an Alaskan freighter captured on film the eruption of a giant earthquake. While taking shots of the dock below, it struck. As the earth trembled, the harbor was sucked dry. Chasm opened beside the ship. A huge tidal wave smashed in. Much of Alaska was shaken apart. Since man first walked this planet, earthquakes have inspired both terror and awe. Ancient Greeks believed that earthquakes were caused by the dead fighting among themselves. Japanese folklore tells us that earthquakes result from the movements of a great spider which carries the earth on its back. Today, we accept more scientific explanations. Yet, giant tremors can still strike suddenly and without warning. April 18, 1906, an earthquake shattered San Francisco. It was caused by a huge rupture in the fault line that runs below the city. A Hollywood film recreated that disaster. A pioneer news cameraman recorded the aftermath of the earthquake. The quake and resulting fires destroyed 28,000 buildings. Over 150,000 people were left homeless. 450 died. Slowly, the dazed city pulled itself together to begin the awesome task of rebuilding. Today, the legacy of 1906 still haunts this beautiful city. Like the restless clouds of a gathering storm, the earth itself is alive and ever-changing. Stirring deep inside are dynamic forces of immeasurable strength. Science has learned only recently that the Earth's crust is divided into a dozen gigantic blocks or plates. Most of the world's earthquakes strike along the seams of these plates. Together they form a huge mosaic on the Earth's surface. Nearly all of North America, plus a large part of the Atlantic Ocean, make up a block called the North American Plate. The volcanically active floor of the Pacific Ocean, from Japan to California, is another giant slab known as the North Pacific Plate. About 80 miles thick, each plate is under constant pressure to move. Driven by enormous forces that we know very little about, they float like rafts on the Earth's soft mantle. Yet they do not float freely. Where they touch, there is constant strain and pressure. Each plate struggles to push, bump, and drive past the other. Cutting through California like a giant scar is a major fracture in the Earth's crust. It is known as the San Andreas Fault. At about the speed that fingernails grow, each plate is grinding against the other in opposite directions. Over thousands of years, the fault's slow movement has displaced the course of riverbeds. In the city of Hollister in central California, the earth on either side of the San Andreas Fault moves freely and relatively quickly. Curbstones and sidewalks throughout the city are warped and displaced by the gradual slippage along the fault. The continuous movement of the ground leaves fences bent and twisted. At a nearby winery, solid block concrete walls are creeping away from their supports. It is dramatic evidence of an active fault. In Southern California, near Los Angeles, 
the San Andreas Fault looks like a rocky ravine. For the last hundred years, this section of the fault has been locked in place. Eventually, it must catch up with the movement of other sections. When rock resists a constant pressure to move, it bends and distorts until finally, it fractures. That is an earthquake. Friday, March 10th, 1933. Hollywood's film studios are bustling with activity. On a sound stage at Paramount Studios, W.C. Fields has just begun a scene. The family saved my life. Now what can I do for you? Take us to Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai? Yeah. What, what's the matter? Earthquake. Yeah. 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 Quick, get behind the road. Now everybody walk from these. All right now. It's all right. Come on. All right. Okay. is heavily shaken, but the earthquake's power is centered in the city of Long Beach, 40 miles away. One hundred fifteen people were killed, thousands injured. The toll would have been even worse if the quake had occurred two hours earlier while the schools were still in session. The city's schools took the heaviest damage of any class of building. Most of the buildings still standing had to be demolished. Though its effect was devastating, the tremor that jolted Long Beach was only of moderate power. Computer technology is now being used to help record and analyze changes in the earth. Much of the San Andreas Fault is now under close surveillance. It is bugged with a network of ultra-sensitive instruments. Each detects subtle movements and changes in magnetic fields which might precede a quake. Dr. Peter Ward is chief of the Mechanics and Prediction Branch of the National Center for Earthquake Research in Menlo Park, California. We know that stress is building in California, and we know that stress will be primarily relieved in a major earthquake. When that earthquake will occur, we're not sure of, but we know that it will occur. Using the knowledge that certain physical changes occur in the Earth before some tremors, scientists have accurately predicted small, localized earthquakes. A tilt meter detects tiny variations in the Earth's level. Slight movements are sometimes a signal that an earthquake will take place. Powerful laser beams measure the movements of Earth along the fault line checking for sudden changes. Much of the San Andreas Fault is highly active. In central California, about 10 earthquakes are recorded every day. The Mojave Desert, just north of Los Angeles. A striking landscape lies on the center of a little understood and controversial geological event. It has come to be known as the Bulge. It is a phenomenon that has preceded some major earthquakes. For 15 years, a vast area along the San Andreas Fault has been forced upward a full 10 inches. It may be a signal of a giant quake to come. We know that a major catastrophic earthquake is inevitable in California, certainly in the Los Angeles area. We know from detailed studies of the Los Angeles area and what the effects of this earthquake might be. If the earthquake occurs during the day, perhaps 12,000 people will be killed. If it occurs in the middle of the night, maybe only 3,000 people will be killed. But if one dam were to fail, perhaps tens of thousands of people will be killed and hundreds of thousands of people will be homeless. The threat of earthquakes is much too real but there may be warnings of a giant quake to come. Not a day passes without earthquakes striking somewhere in the world. Often they are too slight to be felt. Inevitably, however, a giant quake occurs, convulsing with such magnitude, it shakes the entire planet. The port of Valdez, Alaska. It is Good Friday, 1964. 
The China, the first freighter of the spring, has just come in to dock. Standing on deck, two sailors begin taking 8mm movies. They film the people and dogs on the dock below. At 5.36 p.m., the earth begins to rumble. The sailors hold on and keep filming. Suddenly, the water in Valdez Harbor begins to drain away. million square miles feel the effect. Downed power lines explode oil tanks, which blaze uncontrolled. Broken gas mains set houses aflame. In Anchorage, the central business district is all but demolished. Large areas of ground turned liquid during the quake, dropping the streets and buildings as much as 30 feet. The Alaska quake was the largest to strike North America in this century. 114 people were killed. Nearly 5,000 were left homeless. Valdez Harbor was destroyed. Scientists are looking in many directions for new ways to predict violent quakes. Up to 12 billion light years away, like fixed beacons in space, are points of light called quasars. They emit regular bursts of high-frequency radio energy. Radio antennas on opposite sides of the San Andreas Fault receive and measure signals from a quasar. By comparing the arrival times of these signals, minute movements of the Earth's crust can be detected. Subtle changes in the San Andreas Fault now reveal themselves in three dimensions. A sudden variation may be an early signal of a forming earthquake. Unusual animal behavior before earthquakes has been reported for hundreds of years. Zookeepers have noticed monkeys and chimps act strangely just before quakes. They stay low to the ground and will not enter their shelters. Many household dogs have also seen to know that a tremor is coming. They often bark for no reason or wander nervously around a room. On November 27, 1974, horses near Hollister, California became nervous and skittish. The next day, a moderate quake struck the area. A unique experiment is testing the idea that animals can predict earthquakes. The subjects are common cockroaches. A sensitive monitor continually records their level of activity looking for sudden changes. It seems almost funny that a nervous cockroach may herald a major catastrophe, but it could turn out that the Earth's oldest living inhabitant could tell us something about our planet. At the University of California, scientists create their own earthquakes. Scale models of buildings shake under the impact of an earthquake simulator machine. Hydraulic arms slam a 45-ton concrete block in two directions at once, duplicating the ground motion of the most severe quakes. Information gained from such tests may lead to new building standards and possibly save countless lives. In 1982, a rare and perhaps ominous event will take place in our solar system. first time in nearly 200 years, all nine planets will form a straight line on one side of the sun. 
two British astronomers believe that this unusual alignment will cause an epidemic of giant earthquakes. Their theory states that the combined gravitational fields of the planets will create an enormous increase in the sun's magnetic activity. Huge storms of sunspots and solar flares will explode into space. Radiation from the turbulent surface of the sun will severely affect the Earth's atmosphere. Phenomena like the northern lights will be greatly intensified. Prevailing patterns of world weather will be radically altered. Changes in high altitude winds will slow the rotation of the Earth. Predictably, the sudden strain will cause swarms of earthquakes along the world's active faults. If this theory holds up, the strained fault line near San Francisco would be highly vulnerable. Ten miles south of San Francisco, Hundreds of houses stand on unstable ground directly above the San Andreas Fault. In the last several years, the backyards of numerous homes have eroded away. They've dropped into the fault. A large tremor on this area would have a devastating effect. In San Francisco, the prospect of a major earthquake is frightening and grim. Every morning, as thousands of commuters swell its population, San Francisco becomes a setting for potential disaster. That a great quake will jolt this city is, to scientists, inevitable. Many seismologists believe it is already overdue. Several detailed studies of the city have been made. They project what would happen a tremor the size of the 1906 quake occurred again. It is a bleak scenario. Suddenly, the earth begins to tremble and sway. In the crowded financial district, high-rise buildings shiver and sway like blades of grass. Inside, people are flung across rooms. Fires break out. Elevators jam. Walls crack and collapse. Plate glass windows pop out of their frames. Large chunks of broken glass sail through the city's streets. Most of this area stands on unstable landfill. As the earth continues to shake, much of the soil turns to liquid. The street level drops instantly. Earthquake-proof skyscrapers fall into the void. Along Chinatown's famed Grant Street, the shaking is severe. Built almost entirely of unreinforced brick, it is especially susceptible to tremors. Virtually all of Chinatown collapses in on itself. It becomes a mass graveyard. Loose bricks and balconies are the first to go. Throughout the city, parapets, ornamental sculpture, and facades smash down on the people below. Everywhere, there are exploding fires from ruptured gas mains. Cars on the freeways are tossed about like little toys. Sections of asphalt break away in huge chunks. The elevated highways slither, then fall. The cars below are crushed. The stench of raw sewage mixes with smoke from hundreds of houses that burn uncontrolled. The approaches to the Golden Gate Bridge have collapsed. The ground beneath them has liquefied and run off. The bridge itself whips back and forth like a giant snake. Cars are hurled into the water below.
The human toll is enormous. At least 10,000 are dead. 300,000 are injured. Nearly everyone is homeless. This is the projection for a disaster that probably will occur. We just don't know when. Perhaps one day we will predict and control our planet's violent quakes. Until then, we are well advised to look for warnings in any form and heed them if there's time. For over four billion years, earthquakes have shaken and reshaped the Earth's surface. They are a violent expression of our planet's continuing evolution. In California, along the San Andreas Fault, the frequency of earthquakes is high. Yet an active fault line cut through New York City at 125th Street between the Hudson and East Rivers. The regions around Boston and Charleston, South Carolina have as high a seismic risk as Los Angeles or San Francisco. In fact, the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey has determined that one-third of our nation's population lives in areas of high earthquake probability. Science.